God bless you. Love you so much. What an honor to be here with my dear friends. And, you know, we're both hippies. And, you know, for him to, I mean, he was a rock and roller before he got saved. And for him to mention Deep Purple, I mean, that, uh, that dates both of us, number one. Uh, but that says a lot for those who don't. Know. How many of you have never heard me speak before? Just raise your hand. Oh, this, this is good because I could tell you my old jokes and be brand new to you guys. So that's, that's good. Uh, <laughs> Peter Wagner jokes, right? <laughs> no, I'm not going to do that. But, but um, I grew up in the East Coast. In fact, I was just uh, thinking that my, my wife, Sue, was born in New York City. And then she grew up in Cherry Hill, New Jersey. And then she moved to Maryland when she graduated from high school. So she really uh, is a New Jersey girl. And, uh, and then we met at a Bible study uh, called TAG, Take and Give. It was an amazing Bible study because it grew out of just a small little high school Bible study meeting in someone's home in Potomac, Maryland, and grew to over 2,000 kids meeting wow. every Tuesday night. And the leaders was, uh, he was a 19-year-old and a 21-year-old. They alternated speaking. So it was not a pastor. It was not some professional clergy. It was part of the Jesus People Movement. And I walked into that Bible study uh, when it was around 150 people in 1974. And, uh, and I remember I, it was hay fever season. I had the worst case of hay fever. I was asthmatic. I had, I had food allergies. And and, um, you know, it's just like I was on medication, but it was just so bad. And, and I remember walking in, and I'm a new convert. Never saw anyone raise their hands in worship because when I got saved, my dad is a Southern Baptist pastor, so I immediately started to serve him and help him in uh, the local church there. Uh, but it was a Korean church, and I really didn't get much out of it because I don't understand Korean. I mean, I understand maybe around 20% Korean. And so I went to an American church for my own personal growth and edification. So I was attending a Presbyterian Evangelical Church. Uh, he was from Dallas Theological Seminary, but he preached the gospel. And he would give an altar call uh, after every message, and I liked that. And so, you know, I went to that service, even though he didn't believe in the gifts of the Spirit. He didn't believe in healing or anything like that. So I wasn't taught that as a new believer. But anyway, I walk into this tag Bible study with around 150 people, and they're all raising their hands, and I'm looking around. I never raised my hand in a service in my life. But because I'm seeing them, I mean, first of all, I found, I found my tribe, because they're all a bunch of hippies who got saved. It was part of the Jesus people. Because I thought I was the only one. And really, I mean, I had hair down to my waist. I hadn't cut it in three and a half years. I'm not sure. I may be in the, the first Korean hippie in North America. I'm not sure. But anyway, <laughs> but... But, you know, to see all these hippies there, I said, oh, my goodness, there are others who got saved like me, you know. And, uh, and so I just raised my hand. The moment I raised my hands, the power of God hit me, and I was instantly healed of allergies, asthma, food allergies, and I've been healed ever since. Can we thank Jesus? 44 years of walking. So, you know, I couldn't stand the Cherry Blossom Festival in Washington, D.C., even though I grew up because it was just hay fever time. Uh, but now I, I love it and enjoy it, and God is so good. He loves you so much, and what a privilege for me to be here. And, uh, and that word from Trish is uh, a real right-on word because there is another wave of glory, another wave of revival hitting us, and um, there's signs of it everywhere. You know, one of the things that... Um, the Lord's been speaking to me is that we go from glory to glory, right? And, uh, and the glory of the latter house will be greater than the glory of the former, right? Haggai 2, 7 through 9. And, and so it gets better. The, the, the word says the path of the righteous is like the light of dawn and shines brighter and brighter until the full day. And so the point being is, is that we should expect even greater manifestation of his presence. We should expect more harvest, more miracles uh, than we, we experience. And I've been following the Lord now. This coming May would be 44 years. You know, I got saved at a Deep Purple, May 29th at the Deep Purple concert in Baltimore Civic Center in 1973. And, and so, uh, so I'm anticipating because I, by the grace of God, First of all, by the grace of God, we are what we are, right? I mean, we wouldn't be here, none of us, apart from the grace of God. But by the grace of God, I've had the privilege of experiencing four major moves of the Holy Spirit. I got saved during the Jesus People Movement, then came into the Charismatic Renewal, 
with my Catholic pastor friend, Larry Tomsack, and Duquesne University and Ann Arbor back in, uh, in the 70s. And, and then I got involved with John Wimber. I went to Fuller in 1984, and John Wimber was my teacher and got involved with the Third Wave and the whole vineyard movement. And then, of course, the Toronto outpouring in 1994. And, um, and so four major moves of the Holy Spirit, and we're still riding this wave, but there's another wave coming upon the church. Amen. And it's going to be more glorious. Uh, and, and so I want to talk about revival, but here's what I've been seeing. Even since I've been in New York, I've had the most unusual prophetic encounter. Uh, I don't know how to describe it. It's just like an, the Lord is just doing some kind of parable before me because I've been seeing double everywhere. Double everywhere. So, for example, I, I met a, twins at a service I was preaching at uh, the first night. And, um, you know, and, and they were both in their 50s, both pastors and their twins. And, you know, I just met them and so I saw them. And then this morning I'm having breakfast at the Double Tree, by the way, Double <laughs> Tree. And, uh, and I see another set of twins. And, uh, and then I said, what? I mean, now, what are the odds I'm seeing twins two days in a row? And, um, and then over their head was the word double because it was double tree, and I didn't see the tree part, you know? So I said, okay, what are you saying? And then I, as I'm coming down the road, all of a sudden I'm seeing the word double on signs. Everything's just double. And then even numbers, I'm seeing 444. Usually it's 222, you know? As Isaiah 22, 22 gives you the keys of, of David, you're going to open doors that no man can close and close doors that no man can open. And, and so, you know, uh, 22 is a really important number, 222. Two, two. But it's 444. Four, four. And I said, Lord, why are you showing? I'm, I'm just talking about the last two, three days, okay? And so I really feel what the Lord is saying, that you're going to receive a double portion tonight. We are in the... what what. Uh, Malachi 4 prophesies, verse 5 and 6, I'm going to send you the prophet Elijah. And he's going to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children, and hearts of the children to the fathers, lest I strike the ground with a curse. In other words, there's a prophetic invitation. You're going to either have revival or a curse, the absence of his presence. But why is Elijah highlighted? The reason why Elijah is highlighted because he gave a double portion of, to Elijah. And, and I feel I'm here to give you a double portion. I really believe that. And so tonight, I want to lay hands on everyone. I don't normally do this, but I want to lay hands on every person tonight. And I pray that whatever the Lord has deposited during these four wow. waves of the Holy Spirit, of the Jesus People Movement, the Charismatic Movement, the Third Wave, Toronto Outpouring, uh, that you would receive a double portion of it, whatever that looks like. Are you in faith with that tonight? Yeah. And so anyway, I wanted to talk about revival because when we talk about revival, we use so many different synonyms like renewal. Trisha just mentioned awakening, outpouring. Uh, I mean, we could just talk about so many different things. And each word means different things to different people. Even renewal, if I asked you, what does renewal mean to you? We would get a different definition. A revival. I mean, my dad, as a Southern Baptist, would have revival services. You know what I'm saying? It was three nights of inviting another Korean speaker to speak at his church, and he called it revival meetings. And to a certain degree, they were. Okay, I'm not in any way, uh, you know, putting them down. You know, I love my dad. He went home to be the Lord, and it was, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for their prayers. My parents prayed me into the kingdom. Right. Even though there was incredible, you know, they immigrated. My dad was the first Korean Southern Baptist pastor in North America. Yeah. And that's the reason why the door opened up for him to immigrate to the United States in 1958. There was no, I mean, there were a number of Presbyterian Korean churches, a number of United Methodist Korean churches, but not one Southern Baptist. And absolutely no Assembly of God or other denomination. There were only two denominations represented for the Korean community back in 1958. Now there's every single kind of denomination in the United States uh, that are Korean. I mean, they, they say when Koreans gather together in a city, they plant a church. Uh -huh. They say when the Chinese gather together, they start a restaurant. So anyway, that's the <laughs> difference between Chinese and Koreans. And so, <laughs> so anyway, for those who are Chinese, I don't mean that, you know, I mean, you, know, <laughs> you start churches as well. In fact, I mean, 
It is crazy in China right now. I go to China twice a year in October and May, and um, it is just unbelievable. The It's just going from glory to glory there. The harvest is coming in uh, so fast. I'm privileged to lead the seminary that Peter Wagner started in 1998, Wagner Leadership Institute. Uh, he turned that over to me in 2010 when he turned 80. And now we have our largest seminary in China. We have 200 students. And it was amazing. We did the, uh, you know, we had the graduation, part of the graduation on the Great Wall of China this past May. Wow. <laughs> and so uh, it was just open. I mean, it's just like the freedom that we have that you just didn't have before. And I've been going to, into China since 1984. And so the freedom that we're experiencing now is really unprecedented. And, um, and we know that there's a redemptive purpose because with a Chinese passport, they can go to Afghanistan, they can go to Pakistan, they can go to Iran, Iraq, they could go into North Korea, whereas we could not. But these Middle Eastern Muslim nations are inviting Chinese business people to come and start help their uh, infrastructure, their economy, their business, uh, start businesses in their nation. And so if you have a Chinese passport, it's amazing. So what we're doing is equipping them to have a heart for the Muslims to really go back to Jerusalem and bring the gospel of the kingdom wherever they go. So it's God's strategy. I mean, I say God must love Chinese because he made more Chinese than any other people group on the face of their 1.5 billion Chinese, 1.5 billion. And so God's raising them up to fulfill the Great Commission.